across the chip. And when you're uh, when you're spreading this out, you're gonna want to get a nice even um, a nice even spread of a thermal compound. Because if you have too much on there, it'll actually insulate the chip, which will cause it to get too hot very quickly. So you don't want it to be globby. You just want to get a nice even finish where you can't you can't see the chip die anymore. It's just the Arctic Silver, but it can't be too thick, like I just said. Okay, so you have a nice, even layer of Arctic Silver on both of those chips there. So you can see that. Then, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get um, two spacers and put them on each bolt here. Okay, now you're going to want, you're going to have to apply your heat sinks which should also be clean to a uh, to a nice and clean before you apply them to them. Okay. Um, now these are your heat sinks. Um, they probably look similar um, to this in your console. This is um, the CPU heat sink. This is a GPU. Um, the newer ones have um, that extended heat sink that, that comes off with a heat pipe kind of like that. And um, that's better, obviously, than this is. This is a uh, this is an older console, so this is the one that came in, and I'm not going to upgrade it because um, the customer didn't pay for a newer heatsink. If uh, I, I definitely recommend getting a newer heatsink, they can get it for about fifteen to twenty dollars on eBay. It's not that bad. Um, these are obviously cleaned off on the bottom. For these, since they're metal, I use uh, goof off. This is not good for plastics. Um, tried to clean off a PlayStation 2 case one time with this. I wanted it to be really clean. Well, it wiped off the plastic, so it was really clean, but wasn't exactly in great shape. Um, this is the Goo Gun that I was talking about earlier. This is good for plastics and everything, so this is what I use on the uh, electronics. I'm not sure what it would do with this. I'm not sure if it would be okay with the um, PCB, but. Um, I don't want to risk it, so I, I just I just use this. I mean, well, I'm not sure what th this would do with the uh, PCB, so I don't want to risk it. But this is good with this. So this is what I use to clean off the chip dies. This is what I use for the heat sinks. So before you put on your heat sinks, you're gonna want to um, put on your foam shims around the uh, GPU and CPU. Now I just got these in from Wilhelm. These are still in the development stages. Um, they aren't available to America yet, but um, I actually just got these because I volunteered. Um, I think he'll still send you a pack for free. It's it's, um, it's September 1st right now, but um, I think he'll still send you a pack for free if you're in the uh, UK, but if you're in America, there's some available. Um, so basically what you want to do with these like you're, you're going to use credit card strips if uh, you don't have these you just apply them right around they have sticky bottoms and you apply them right around and um, they're going to be on just like that this is the that's the GPU one without the uh, complete edge the square one is going to be the CPU one Okay, so so there's your um, there's your CPU um, shim there. Okay, so now you're gonna want to apply your heat sinks. Just 
peel back the tape. Just hand tighten the screws for now. Make sure you don't pull them out. It's a pain in the neck. You'd have to take the whole board off again because the spacers would fall off that are under the board. On. Get your GPU. Okay, and you're gonna want to flip it over, get rid of this tape, um, and tighten your screws. Now, I like to go back and forth. You're not gonna want to tighten one screw all the way because um, the screw doesn't seem to be in the heat sink. There we go. Okay, you're not gonna want to tighten one screw all the way because that'll set things off the line. You can just tighten the two across though because. Um, these two will just raise just as long as the heat sinks coming down level. So just tighten these. And these two are sticking out as you can see right there. Just tighten them down. Make sure those are all tight. Now these can these can be tweaked once you're uh, if your Xbox like you, it'll probably work from the start right when you turn it on. Um, but if it doesn't, those can be tweaked and um, those will that that will definitely fix your Xbox. I know that um, for sure. And um, if your Xbox starts to break again after a little bit, it's probably going to need a reflow. Um, it might just be because it was so damaged before. Um, I know with consoles that ha don't have too much damage, this hybrid fix is generally permanent. But um, if your console is like heavily damaged, then like based on like if it's like really really warped, as in like. You know, it's had an X clamp on it, just a general X clamp fix on it, which will put lots of pressure on the board. If it's had that on it for a while, or if it's um, or somebody did the penny fix, then the co console's life is generally decreased by that because it's it's really kind of hurtful to the console. But um, the Xbox is um, generally going to work from now on, and this this was um, a general GPU error in 0102, and uh, so. There you go, that's the complete hybrid fix by uh, Wilhelm and Xbox Experts performed by World Formula. Right, and just to give you guys an idea, um, this is my TV, but uh, I just put, put an RF board on here to uh, just show you guys that it is working. Um, this is the same console that I was just working on. Obviously, I probably could have hybrided another console. But you're going to have to trust me here, this is the same console that I was working on. It is a um, Xenon, you can see by the Anna chip right there. Um, well, here you go. Here you go right there. No errors at all. Working perfectly fine. Oh yeah, and uh, this is just for Wilhelm. Um, you didn't think anybody had done the white light mod for their ring of light before. Here it is. There, that is white.